nothing, like, nothing makes you get out of the bed in the morning like a bit of debt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and well, it was rumoured that he, he, you know, when he came home to tell my grandmother what he paid for it, he couldn't remember he was that drunk. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, it'd be the biggest event of its kind. Well, Scotland, probably the world. It's uh, Scott Sheep's, you know, four to five thousand people potentially. So oh, we'll, we'll see what that. happens. I think, but I think it'll be crazy. I've been Cami. I've been Iona. And we are both fed, fed by, by farmers. farmers. Hello and welcome to the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cami Wilson. And me, Iona Murray. We are, as always, very grateful to our sponsors, Crystal X and Animax. Trace your, find your bolus. Trace yep. your bolus. Uh, thanks to them for their continued support and we'll hear a bit more about them. Sorry, I'm just desperate to say something. No, I was teeing you up for a later on in the thing, me. Oh, sorry. Um, I was like, you know, get your words out. <laughs> I th I th well, I thought we could get into oh, a wee habit of, okay. of uh, finishing each other's sentences. sandwiches. Oh, oh, sentences. I thought you'd right. say sandwiches. Um, sorry, you go. No, it was just somebody had been speaking about, um, I was speaking to about GPS and blah, blah, blah. And apparently there is a bolus that has some sort of GPS. Okay. And I've not looked into it. Well, you know we don't talk about other bolus here, Iona, so please give mm. that to yourself. Trace your trace only for us. Uh, as always, if you want to support the podcast, where can they support the podcast? They can buy a piece of clothing on fedbyfarmers.co.uk or drop into your local Cars Billington. Yeah, shout out to Cars. They're well stocked up in Fed by Farmer gear. If you shop there, take a look at the range. And do you know somewhere else they could support us? Where? <laughs> no, I'm just going to try that. I don't even know this one, folks. I don't know. I, no, I'm just gonna try and do like a like a slip into Scottish sheep because that's what this podcast is about. Oh, it didn't work, yeah, no, do you know no, what I mean? No, I, no like, but you could have done it. You just bottled it. I bottled it. You I could did. support us because this podcast is about well, it's a a bit about James Hamilton and and, and the Hamiltons at Aitken Gall and. Uh, none raw and every other farm they have and <laughs> it's, it's more about promoting scott sheep so it's quite a short one um just to get the word out in time for the event and what i was going to say is we're going to be there with the merch stand we'll have fed by farmers and we'll have sheep game gear there there looking forward to meeting you there but we're going to speak to james hamilton now yes so should we just do a wee quick overview of james hamilton one of the brothers at eight can farm who's hosting this year's scott sheep yeah event that's... Yeah, you pretty much you pretty much nailed it. Okay. It, well, should you say it's Scott? Well, yeah, we're going to say it's Scottish business in this podcast, uh, and we're going to explain who James is in the yeah, podcast. Right. So there's no need to to dilly dally. Let's just dive into it, and then we'll talk about it at the end. Here we go. Okay, so we're here with James Hamilton, one of the hosts of Scott Sheep 2024. How are you? Getting there. Stress is building here. We're just a week out, so uh, yeah, the the first marquee is going up as we speak, and. Painters finishing off and power washers, so uh, aye, all coming together, uh, lastminute.com. Aye, aye, we were supposed to film this uh, back before you were under so much pressure, yeah. <laughs> um, and Iona's been on at me constantly, and then it's like, well, it's happening next week, are we doing it or not? So we come when he's at his busiest. I know, it's fine, it's fine, it, it, it gets me away from a paintbrush, so I'm happy. Aye. How was lambing? Uh, aye, testing, testing. Uh, it was, uh, aye, that was a vintage uh, disaster one, but uh, Scott Sheep has been a great thing. We put a new shed up, uh, and, and, and with this, the, a wee bit of pride is not a bad thing. So we took on a bit more staff, and uh, we kept things alive. But my God, it was it was a hell of a work, and, and we got there. So, so was it the, with the weather that was causing it? Just the weather, rain, rain just I never seen anything anything like it. Um, really, I mean, we, we were actually competing with pals in Sanka for who could have most water over their wellies and silage fields and I actually think we were winning. <laughs> yeah. um, so, yeah. so I know, serious. Uh, Beast, Beast from the East was, was, was maybe worse, we had more death, but, uh, but uh, aye, this, uh, it, was, it was relentless. Mm -hmm. aye. Um, should we maybe just say where we are right now? Aye, yes, give us a bit yeah. of that, because folk will say how far are you for Sangha? Yeah, yeah oh, we're, we're a long way, opposite sides of the country. Uh, so we're here at Dunbar, uh, east, uh, right on the East Coast, probably last, uh, last up one farm on the East Coast. Uh, for, uh, uh, tragically, the first one off the North Sea, so that is one of our big uh, challenges generally, is, is, is we're the first hill off the Arctic, uh, so we get, we get a lot of cold, dry, uh, kill, but it's, it's killing weather at lambing time, so, so, we, have, so we, have, we have brought the thing inside in the last five or six years to, to make it easier on that basis. And Aitken Gall is the host for Scott Sheep, are we on Aitken yep. Gall just now? So we're, we're on Thurston Mains here just now. Okay. Uh, How many farms do you have? 
uh, the, the, the home farm here, Aiken Gall, we moved to uh, from Dykefoot in Lanarkshire in 1998. Uh, we're here, on, we're in Thurston Mains, which is uh, next door to Aiken Gall. Uh, we, we bought this in two bits in 2004 and 2008, uh, and it's encompassed Aiken Gall and Thurston into a ring fence of about two and a half thousand acres. Uh, wow. Thurston Mains <laughs> here, as, as you see, uh, well, it's a, it's a big headache, but Virgin Money take care of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 mainline sponsor, but that's my, my interest payments probably covering that. But, that's that. Uh, uh, got a shout for, out to for, Virgin. I uh, push shout out to Virgin <laughs> and then and, and to Community Wind Power who help, also help. Uh, the first, the first in here is um, it's, it's a kind of low ground unit, so it complements Aiken Gall is a kind of upland farm. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably about 700 acres of fields on it, uh, which are predominantly sitting around about sort of 900 to 1,000 feet. Um, uh, but but it's, it's a productive farm, and uh, th but Thurston we've just come down the hill and just we've been able to grow the crop to finish the the, the cattle p predominantly, but but also the lambs. So, so everything uh, is 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 either used for breeding or, or, or finished that we, that we do. So what what is your sorry, what is your total acreage then and, and total headage of stock? Uh, our total our total th as a, as a family. So 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 I'm here. You can go on Thurston. I've got my brother Harry. We we came in, in uh, earlier in the year. Uh, Nunro. He's, he's 1,200 acres there that, that he rents off uh, off off Nunro Abbey. Cistercian monks. Uh, my brother Charles. He's a, he's 600 acres uh, arable farm predominantly at Haddington, and then we contract farm uh, a farm course up with the with the Walgate family. At Heriot, which is about two thousand acres, wow. uh, so so it's uh, I have a bit a bit of an undertaking, but we're we're running about nine hundred sucker cows and and just <laughs> about just over two and a half thousand two thousand seven hundred breeding ewes. Wow. Uh, so so and uh, uh, <laughs> lamb and calf all at the same time. So it's I uh, it's just it's, we're, we're just out of the torture period. A few more grey hairs. And you boys are not playing at it. That's oh, for sure. That's mental. Nine hundred sucker cows. Jesus. And how's it grown over the years? Has it been sort of gradual? Yeah, very gradual. Yeah, so, so we were. Um, so my father, when we started away at Dykefoot, um, uh, he would have uh, about, about eight hundred blackfish ewes to start with. Dykefoot was a, it's a, it's a decent sized hill farm. Uh, that's not bad. Was that about five minutes before blackfish ewes were mentioned? Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> Never thinking in the podcast, they always get a mention. <laughs> right. Oh well, they, 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 <laughs> there you go. So your fortune started with the blackies. Well, they're the most numeric breed in, in, in Scotland, so so everyone's going to have an affiliation to them at some point. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, but I uh, so so uh, so no. So, so Dykefoot. It was a kind of uh, very peaty kind of hill farm. And was your, has that been in the family for generations? Uh, that would be my grandfather would have bought that in about uh, in, in the late sixties, I think. Uh, uh, I think he actually bought it at, at, at auction at Lanark Market. Uh, and well, it was rumoured that he'd, he, you know, when he came home to tell my grandmother what he'd paid for it, he couldn't remember he was that drunk. So. <laughs> uh, so uh, oh, that's so, what he told her. So, that's what he told her. <laughs> I, I, so, so, but uh, Wolfords was was where we, was where we sort of a uh, uh, the, the family sort of hailed, the Hamilton family sort of hailed from. Uh, they moved there from from uh, well from Drumclog in, in 1864. Uh, and 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 uh, so we were three or four generations at Wolfords, and then my grandfather would would would, would buy dyke food where, where dad would go, and then when I was about fourteen, uh, we, 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 through tragic circumstances, I, I lost a, uh, a wee brother in a farm accident, uh, which was the catalyst. But we came, we came here in nineteen ninety eight, and uh, just taking go, and then I suppose it's just sort of just steadily progressed. We got we got the option to rent Thurston Mains. Uh, to start with, and then it was quite a nice way. We sort of managed to sort of just buy it in bits uh, over over a few years, which was easier to sort of finance. And then, uh, you know, when we've, we've been very lucky, well, it's lucky, but it's, it's forced luck. You know, my father sort of bought the farm with, with a view that uh, the environmental payments and uh, and renewables was was a big thing. We'd, we'd just it would just been approached at Dykefoot. Um, but we pursued that uh, avenue here and got in tow with uh, with, with Rod Wood at uh, Community Wind Power, uh, who have done a great job in the, in the, in, in, in the 48 megawatts of, 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 of wind turbine power on Aiken Gall, which, is, which has helped us uh, to sort of, I, I don't mind admitting it, to finance the, the succession and, and, and buy the arable for, for Charles. I think it's nice when folk just admit it. Like, I sometimes find it hard when there's like big wind turbines blowing behind us and like nobody talks about them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Uh, uh, Do you know? Uh -huh. um, like, because we can obviously see them on the hill here. Uh -huh. And it's forty-eight megawatts. I mean, they look like big ones to me. Is that? It's 48 megawatts a lot. Yeah, How many that, turbines that, are we that's talking? A big one. That would have been one of the bigger sort of wind farms. In, that was 2008, and that would have been one of the bigger wind farms in Scotland at the point. Oh, wow. um, mm -hmm. But you know, there's, there's, the, 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 the machines have got bigger. I think that I, I can't remember the figures. I'll tell you, but nonsense. But I think something like 16,000 houses or something is what that's capable of powering. 
Um, so, so no, so it's been a great thing, and you know, and for us as, 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 as well. And is that what kind of length of contract are you on there? Is that just, so is it, it forever? Or it's all sort of varied. It's it's a, that's a twenty-five year one, but now you'll find more of the deals are going to thirty-five. Okay. But uh, uh, I, th I think that you know the way the way the the, the economy is looking and the, and the government policy is, but you know, it'll, I'll, I'll I hope it'll get I hope it gets renewed and, and, and keeps going. But I mean, I would say with it, you know, I mean, it's it's been a great sort of injection of cash flow t for us, but we probably know Richard on a day to day basis. It's, it, it's paying the mortgage on my brother's farm, so it's it's the, the profit on us is it's sort of the succession, uh, it, really. It, it's this thing we talk about farmers all the time. It's like, see if you want to boost the economy, give farmers money. Yeah, yeah. Because like, you're cutting about here on a 15 plate pickup. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you're out work, you're limping uh -huh. because you've been trying to sort cattle and they've done, you've done your knee, <laughs> which is another story we'll talk about. We'll blame Scott Sheep for that. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, we don't go and blow it on uh, Ferraris or yeah. well, your neighbour does, but that's not yeah, story. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a Lamborghini, actually. <laughs> um, but uh, that's hen boys are worse than the, the, the wind turbine. But you know what I mean? It all goes back. You don't have to have a cattle now. It's all employing folk. Exactly. I think, there's, some, I think yeah. there's, there's a couple of Lamborghinis in the Muirkirk area now, then. Uh, that, uh, could possibly be it. Mitchell's at his side. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know how they survive all the Muirkirk on it, so they're hardy, hardy boys. Um, but yeah, it is true, though. It's like, you know, a farmer uh, does they put it in the Cayman Islands. I think I get He spends it. I think, I think it's a key thing. And, and I, got, I think get the money up the hill. It trickles down, and yeah. as, as well, you know, the, if you get, if you get the money into the beef, which is what we've done well in Scotland, and that's that, that's coming through. You know, we're, we're that, that's putting a base on the on the on the cereal crops for a base for 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 the feed value and the and the straw. So it's really I, if we go and buy a tractor or whatever, and it keeps all the dealerships going. So it's a, it's a yeah. great circular economy that you create. That's, I you're right. Yeah. Or if you get, or, you, or, or, or you give it into, you know, don't, don't want to be, be into, sort of into Edinburgh, you know, they buy an iPhone or they go on a fancy holiday, don't they? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that money doesn't come back out. It, it, it's always, uh, we have this illness, it's like, you know, you're at 900 cattle, but when you get to 900, you're thinking, God, a thousand would sound nicer. Aye, aye. <laughs> well, that's, we were having this discussion the other day, what would you do if you won the lottery? Like, more cows, aye, 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 you got to get there, aye, aye. Aye. Shed. Keep spending until it was all gone. There's, there's, some, there's something about that, uh, keep far no, it's keep farming till it was all gone. What would you do if you won the lottery? Keep farming till it was all gone. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. It does about. I mean, I've read a good saying I've been brought up with was uh, was to live and farm uh, as if you're going to live for, uh, as if you live forever, but uh, but have fun like you're going to uh, die tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a good mentality of your life, isn't it? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Which aye. is why we are here having fun. Aye, exa exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, now the Scott the Scott sheep thing was that thrust upon you uh, unwillingly, or did you volunteer? Uh, it was kind of thrust upon me. Uh, would would actually it was 2019. We were sort of approached. Uh, when, my, when my father was sort of approached uh, um, by the organising by, by the NSA. Uh, and tragically, uh, he died just a couple of weeks afterwards. But so we just had sort of initial discussions, and yeah. he was I uh, very much looking forward to to, to opening the doors and, uh, and, and 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 thoroughly relish the challenge of these things. So, Should we, uh, would it be okay to do a wee overview of what Scott Sheep is? Yeah, so Scott Sheep is probably it'd be the biggest event of its kind. Well, Scotland, probably the world. Um, really, you know, we're expecting kind of uh, based on on on, on re recent uh, Scott Sheep's, you know, four to five thousand people potentially uh, through the gates. Uh, the weather at the moment looks like it's going to behave. So, so oh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think, but I think it'll be crazy. It's uh, they've they've done you know you, you and Elmsley and Colin McPhail and the organising committee. They've done a great job and they've got. Uh, as record uh, stands booked and sponsorships, th uh, they've done really well. Uh, so it's got all the markings so far. Um, so so here, here's hoping. And one big thing about for the point of view of people taking a, uh, taking stands, ourselves included, obviously we're going to have a stand here as well. But like everybody at Scott Sheep is a customer, potential customer. Uh -huh. You know, it's such a specialist. Mm -hmm. You know, Royal Highland Show, there's a lot of uh, lifestyle people, there's horsey people, cattle people, whatever. Yeah. You yeah. know, everybody here... <laughs> Not everybody, but more or less everybody here has either connection to sheep mm -hmm. or they are sheep farming. Yeah. Uh, so you have that potential cost. There's so much value in a stand here. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, well, it's a lot cheaper on the Highland Show is another good thing as well. <laughs> Um, exactly, and you see that more now because there's more more farms that are bringing uh, stock. We were, you know, we we're talking about you know your Largy Darnos and and and, and Doix and Midlux, and it, it's, it's, you know it's great to see folk promoting themselves as a yeah. as, as, as a farm as well. As a brand, uh, isn't Almost, it? you know, yeah, like, these farms it? are becoming like brands now. Yeah, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh -huh. um, and obviously, some of them have their own uh, breeds that they they put the brand name on. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go. I'm going to say, I know I'm biased because I'm a I'm a sheep man, okay. but I, I think it's the best one day show there is. 
Okay, why? P purely, probably purely because of my sheep band, but not even just that, because it, it's so well organised. Everybody's there. You know, like mm -hmm. you go to, you go to, like, I mean, I'm talking one day shows, your one day shows are things like Air, mm -hmm. um, your other kind of bigger county shows that might compete. They have wee bits of something there, mm -hmm. wee bits of that there, but Scotch sheep, the whole country. Oh, yeah. And okay. a lot from England, and, and I'll, you'll get you'll get Romney, you know, you'll get probably Romney breeders coming from down south up here. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got great uh, great access links to the one thing. Yeah, so, so, yeah that's just true. Three miles off, it's, uh, I know, I would think, I would mm. think it's, it's, easy, it's easy to access, but Aye. as you say, no, it's a great, it's a great thing, uh, you know, for folk to come and talk shop, and yeah. I think as well, after... After the year we've just had yeah. in the spring, and it's not just that, it's the whole country, and mm -hmm. there's a mental health epidemic there, and yep. you know, we've got a bar, it'll be a great bar, and there's a speed shear in it as well to create a bit of atmosphere and just yeah. let some hair down and have some fun and forget about all that crap and, and move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, is, that is a big thing, it's uh -huh. a social, is for 99% for of folk, uh -huh. it's just a social uh, but, day out, uh, where but, you might get a few, you know, you put a few ideas in your head, you go in the stand, you get the crack, get a free beer, uh -huh. And uh, and you start you go home and think about it later, but really at the time, uh -huh. you're there to see folk you haven't seen, and yeah. uh, the first thing I'd do is say, "In some way, they're in it." <laughs> 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 we should just have t-shirts. <laughs> we should, <laughs> we should, we should some. Yes, it was a bad lamin. <laughs> 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 uh, it, it's amazing how like a sheep sheep folk. I imagine beef folk are the same with calving. Uh, obviously, you do both, but it, it's like uh, when you come out of that bubble of lambing, uh -huh. the f all conversations yeah, that way not. was like you can't not. It's like how uh -huh. how is lambing? Uh -huh. but, but you know it was shit. Uh -huh. yeah. Like uh -huh. can, yeah. but it's it's like you, you, it's like not. comes out before you. It's like <laughs> how is lambing just as bad as everybody else's? Uh -huh. aye, 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 right. Get ready for a successful turnout and choose Crystalix this grazing season. Spring grass is typically fast growing and lush, however it can contain high levels of potassium which reduces magnesium availability. Crystalix cattle HiMag incorporates multiple magnesium sources and is proven through trials at Glasgow University to help maintain normal blood magnesium levels. With 35% sugar and a unique blend of vitamins, minerals and trace elements, Crystalix cattle HiMag supports optimal performance at turnout. There must be a lot of organising going into it. So has has sort of plans been going on since two thousand and nineteen? Yeah, well, I mean, um, for myself, yes. You know, we've kind of I've been doing wee bits and bobs. You know, we, uh, we got nailed with Storm Arwen actually, and, and uh, well, I can't remember when that was twenty one, but I did a bit of damage. So it was a good excuse to go and tidy some sheds up. And with this in mind, and uh, I, suppose, I suppose we've been quite lucky. Covid kind of came in and delayed the whole thing, so I had a bit more time to, well, maybe stress about it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But we, we, and think about it. But it's really in the last year we've done, done all the big, uh, the, the, we put a cat a new cattle shed up and, uh, and 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 sort of improved the setting a bit to, to tidy up. But it's it's a good excuse for the, the tidy up and yeah. ready up of a lifetime. And what age are you, James? Uh, I'm 39. 39. So you're no ma that much older than me. Um, but you said your father passed in 20. It was quite a sudden thing. Quite a sudden thing, I, 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 I had a heart, heart attack. I, I, just knee warning, just I, but, boom, gone, just, was it? Just, just, well, unfortunately, he was, I, he was, he was driving a, a photo at the time, so was it was I, 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 middle of the lambing time. But, but, Christ, uh, I, 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 so, so I, no, it was a, a bit of a shock. Aye, I saw one for everyone. I know, yeah. you know, my, not so much my father died suddenly as well when I was, say, 25, so I know farming, I'm not saying outside of farming it's different, but uh -huh. I often talk when I talk about these things. And you can tell me if I'm wrong about this, but you quite often as a wee boy you have that your dad's your hero type thing. Yeah. Um, so it's always a, ve a very very sore one. I know your dad's your hero, that's for sure. Uh -huh. um, does it make it a bit more special? Do you feel a bit more it, uh, pressure to make it amazing because he agreed to it initially? It does. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I make no bones about it. And I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself a, a religious guy, but I've 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 got that wee spiritual bit in me. I do mm -hmm. believe uh, that, that you know my father, you know. All our sort of fa families and like our, our brothers yeah, and see yeah. and see so uh, I, I do think you know the sun will be shining and, and it'll be looking down with a bit of pride hopefully and uh, and, and and you know I'm, I, I am doing it for that as, as much as anything really. Aye, uh, yeah. uh, and, uh, good on you, good uh, on you, brilliant. It's a, it's a hellish thing, uh, and I can tell already having a wee look around the stead. What's well, about tarmacking getting done? I've got tarmacking. I, 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 thankfully, to, well, it's community wind power are actually doing the oh, are do, doing the road, but I've, uh, I think they've, they've done a wee bit of the silage bit as well, so we're getting the, the <laughs> thing tidied up. I am uh, next. Uh, I drop it in your <laughs> place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't share that in the video. To them. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Community Wind Power, I tell you. As soon as I went a bit of land, I'm before them. And how, like, 
I know from uh, speaking uh, uh, when we had it over from Larg was the last Scott Sheep. Scott Sheep put something into it, but they actually don't put that much into it. Is that right? No, you know, not, they'll give you a little bit towards your no, thing, not, but a lot of it's on your own back. I'll, not, I'll, not, I'll, I'll, I'll be lucky with what I get for it. I'll cover the, I'll cover the power washing bill. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the rest of it's myself. But you know, we have, we have spent a bit. But at the same time, I don't, I don't mind in, a, in, in one sense. We have improved the, the infrastructure of the farm. And well, I'm joking to everyone at the moment. I'm going to phone Savills afterwards and get on the market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, now's the time to sell. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but it's almost one of those kind of iconic. Well, maybe it's me again. Uh, one of those iconic things because. Once you've had a Scotch sheep, you're almost enshrined in history because you remember where it's. Yeah. And we had it at King's Arms down at Ballantrae, and it's like uh -huh. everybody now knows that farm. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I know uh -huh. your neighbours, nobody knows you, but uh -huh. I, you know, I, d I never didn't know about Eight Can Goal uh -huh. uh, as such. I know you as a, as a family because you're a big deal, obviously, but actually, you know, Eight Can Goal is a farm and outfit. Uh -huh. Once folk have been there, they never forget it. Like, uh, well. <laughs> For good reasons or bad reasons, I don't know. But I'm a believer. If it's, if it's bad as well, you remember it as well. Aye, yeah. aye. No, no, it's it's no, it's a it's a huge honour for us as a family. It, it really is, and it's uh, I to, to sharpen up the pencil of it and, and welcome everyone to the to the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what's the future for this place, for you as a as a family and as a well, well hopefully we don't don't go down the route. You know, Swinton had the beef event, and then a year after they've sold all the beef cows and put a dairy on. So I really <laughs> want to do that. I uh, know. I think hope, hopefully you know, I've got two young sons. As well and Richie, uh, you know, so it'd be, it'd be, it would be, it'd be not that I want to put pressure on them, but it'd be lovely if they wanted to come into the into the industry and uh, you know and sort of leave them. You know, that, that's the way I've been brought up was to sort of try and build a business and leave it better off and you know, create that bit of drive. And I suppose it's you know the sort of the building and the and the, the, the one of the big things has been debt as well. It's been a great thing and really sort of driven us to sort of get up in the morning and you you have to make it work and mm -hmm. and then you know to see another generation hopefully coming on. It would be, it would be, it would be, I'd be quite proud. Yeah. Yeah. Funny, we were kind of talking about that in the way down the road about, uh, well, we're kind of talking about mental health and different things. And like, I'm kind of a believer that actually, like, like a bit of fighting for survival is actually pretty good for you. Like, yeah. So if th I think if things are too cushy and you're no under a wee bit, of, I'm not massive pressure will crush you, but a wee bit of pressure and motivation to go and do something, uh -huh. it, it's not a good thing for you. Like, you need that wee bit of. Uh -huh. Get out and get it. No, nothing, like, nothing makes you get out of the bed in the morning like a bit of debt. <laughs> <laughs> get that on a t-shirt as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh -huh. and, and like you, know, you know, swings. But generally speaking, you speak to people, and 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 they'll say, you know, debt's a good thing. Uh -huh. You know, if you're if you're mm -hmm. lucky enough yeah. to be in a position to borrow you know, to expand. It's you know, with. you know, I'm lucky. It's a real shame farming as an industry. You know that. You see all these young guys that are crying out to get in, but it's there's so much capital tied up in it. And you know, I'm really lucky. I've been born into it. Well, some would say lucky. Some would <laughs> disagree with that. But but no, I've, you know, but I've got something to sort of leverage against and 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 make it work. Whereas you know, we've, we've got a, we're a lovely team of young shepherds. You're sort of doing a bit of contract shepherding and things this year. They're you know hungry as you can imagine yeah. to get in, but just the so many barriers in front of them and. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's it's a it's a shame. But I I think realistically, and interestingly, you, you you won't have heard this one, but I did a little podcast with um, H and H, and we had a chat from Oxbury Bank there. Um, we shouldn't have mentioned him much. This is a Virgin Money podcast, <laughs> uh, but we had a chat from Oxbury there, and there's a really interesting thing that I didn't knew nothing about. In England and Wales, you can finance against the value of your stock. So right? you can borrow against the value of your stock, but you can't do that in Scotland. So that's good for like tenant farmers or, or yeah. especially tenant dairy farmers. Uh -huh. Well, it doesn't. It does, it's obviously a, a big risk, uh -huh. you know, bad uh -huh. weather and things. But then your insurance maybe and stuff. But you know, for me, for example, I'm sitting on maybe three hundred thousand a stock. Uh -huh. That if I wanted to buy a farm, I need to sell that whole lot, pay the tax bill, and then what you're left with, you and then start, start no, you again. Can leverage that against the land. Yep. No, Whereas they could mean. leverage it with something else. So it's like you say, it's it's, it's getting started. That's, that's, the brilliant. that's brilliant. That a bank are prepared to do. You know, because I, I can yeah. see the, the the risk to the mainstream ones for why they don't. But that's that's yeah. tremendous. If they, if, if they are, I, I I'm going to go look into it myself. Aye, well, they need to bring it bloody up. Well, you're close enough to the border. You could just yeah. buy a house. <laughs> Uh, buy a house in Berwick up on Tweed, you'll be, you'll be fine. Um, and I, I think we probably didn't touch on enough because we, like, we sometimes go off on mad tangents, but I actually folk love the actual core farming content. Yeah. Is, uh, did we actually say what kind of cattle and sheep you're running? No, we didn't. Uh, no, that's quite uh, an important uh, one for folk. I, oh, well, so we run... Uh, well, when we came to Aiken we'd, we'd sort of 
they were damn near pure cemental, cemental cross cows. But you know, as you'll see when you come to the day, hopefully, uh, we're kind of up on farm. So, so we're, we're you're seeing it at its best now. But you, the, the shoulders of the year, we want a smaller cow that can thrive off this uh, sort of forage and poorer stuff on the sort of heathery type ground. Uh, so we've worked quite hard to get the using sort of traditional genetics, uh, ling, short horn, uh, and, and latterly we're now on to Lincoln Red. Uh, and getting on very well with them. So, so Simmental Cross, Lincoln Red, and uh, I occasionally put an Angus in, uh, more, more for the premium than anything, to be honest. Um, but uh, just try to get the smaller cow. Um, we, we run it all, as we said earlier, we run the whole thing through, we breed all our own replacements and uh, and, and finish everything. And then stock and then sheep wise, uh, which I suppose is the main thing we're on about, is, yeah, is yeah. we're, we're uh, uh, I did a video for the black faces actually, so everyone will be fed up of hearing me talking about the stratified system. But, you know, <laughs> for those that don't know, it's it's you know, so we run this nucleus flock of black face ewes pure yep. on the hill, and then we cross it down through the fields to a blue face Leicester, and then Harry, my brother, uh, uh, takes the the mule ewes to, to, to a textile top, so he's uh, I get on well. First first row lambs, uh, textile lamb fifty away yesterday. At, down there nine quid a kilo, so, so that, that's the that's the jewel in the crown of the thing. But I'm basically the I'm basically the breeder multiplier flock of that of that part for for, for, for yeah. Harry. But it's kind of like we're talking about the money starting up hill again. Like you're starting with the blackies uphill, uh -huh. uh, breeding them pure, and is it down onto the easier ground? You're getting down through into that cross. Uh -huh. I, I tell you, you, don't breed your own texel tops or anything like that. You buy them in. But just just buy them in. Uh, yeah, there's there's. Uh, there's there's plenty of folk doing it, so there's there's always a, there's always a, a an, ample, an ample market, but it's getting the right kind now and sort of steering away. You know, we would try and keep the thing very commercial and same same. We do turn out a few black face tops, but I don't chase the the sort of top ends. You know, I, I have to bear in mind that our, our, this is our bread and butter is, is these sheep, so I need to keep the thing very very commercially set. So we do try and have a bit of style, but they have to be big bodied and and, and correct. And so taken from that, the uh, the stylish ones are not big bodied. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. But, uh, they've all, they've all, they've all, got, got, the, they've all got the, they've all got the, they've all got the potential. As to me, as, as long I don't actually worry too much about the how it looks, size. It's the, but yeah. it has to, to me, the sheep have to handle right. And we did go through a phase where the people took their eye off the ball with that, and, and and the backs were bad, and you can see that in lamb grades and things. But the a lot of the problems in the black face breed have actually been addressed. Uh, OPA was a big one for a while, but we're we're all screening very well for that, and and we're we're, we're actually. Doing a, an exemplar job, I would say, as a, as a breed uh, towards that. Um, but, the, 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 but towards the commercial attributes, with the horns was a big issue. But we're, we're, uh, the, the guys are now are getting more open-headed ones, so that, that's that's getting negated. And but for me, the crucial bit's been getting that shoulder and that handling of the the fat lambs. The, the lambs did noticeably in the, in the breed take a take a hit, um, but they were they're definitely on the upward trajectory now. And and uh, uh, I, I know we've been doing a wee bit of work with the the blackface stand for it and, and we've got some good grading sheets to show what the lambs yeah. uh, can weigh and, and, and do. Well, I mean, it's well worth uh, noting and, and maybe you can add to this. I mean, there was blackies going through the market there, coming off the winter or whatever, uh, you know, in, in April, May, it hit, hitting near 200 pounds. Well, there was some hitting two hundred pound. Yeah. I don't know if what were you topping at? Tremendous. Well, I'd, see, I'd, I'm I'm quite good at talking about things I get wrong rather than right. So I sold them a bit early. And right, right. <laughs> <laughs> missed it, missed it. I got seven quid for some uh, dead, but uh, well, actually, I, I just had a, on my tidy up for today. I had some blackface ewes in the market yesterday. Uh, you know, end, you know, five six crop ewes. Uh, it was nothing about one hundred and thirty two quid or something. I think they were so no depreciation. It's just tremendous, really. Um, Bloody incredible. To consider that when we, when we move to and go. Uh, you know, you, you, you use were worth a pound. You turn up at the market and you get your trailer filled with other people's ones to yeah. just to get rid of them. So, but that's I, I was talking to someone the other day, even just at an, another wee tangent. I want to touch on the OPA and the horn thing very quickly just to explain what they are for folk that don't know. But the, like when I started, like, I, I, we talk about this fight, you're talking about finance to actually get into farming, that's one big hurdle. But actually, now just stocking up. Like when I started, I could go to uh, I think I used to go to UA, uh, draft jows, 40 quid yeah. for uh -huh. draft jows. Get a blue face list of top, get a good meal lamb you could sell or, or keep for yourself, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, like, even draft you out, everything is a fortune. It's, it's serious, isn't it? Like, for a young pair, you're taught these young shepherds to get started. It's daunting and it's a hell of a money for them, to, you know, tied up for a couple of years. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long return on your investment, isn't it? To... It's serious, serious. And, and just for the OPA thing, there'll be loads of folk listening that aren't sheep or, or might not even be aware of. OPA, uh, Iona stands for? Jigsy <laughs> I don't even know if you pronounce it. Like, I'd say Yaksiki. Would you? Would you say Jack? I would say Jack. Would you say Yak 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 Yak
or then a cena or something like that oh, thank uh, you is what it's like uh, it's essentially it's a similar thing to like pneumonia it's a similar kind of thing not yeah. the same but it's a kind of drowning in the lungs yeah and it's got a kind of cancerous type uh, thing and it's, it's an awful way for a for a sheep to die really yeah, and, yeah. and they do die when they get it it's, you know it's, it's a death sentence so that's been the great thing for us about uh, was, we've, we've done a, quite a bit of work with phil scott and morden uh, with it we've been doing it for the last six or seven years but actually a few of the guys in, in the in, in in the clyde valley uh malcolm Cooper and alistair MacArthur and and, uh, and the whites at midlock uh, maybe, maybe got the thing going a bit quicker yeah well i think um, alistair's going we we'll to to get him tied down for a podcast uh, yeah, he's going to come and speak about Al it alistair's been a real pioneer of it and, and, and has made strides and, and the big thing was getting the head you know put too many people buried their heads in the sand with this as a problem and the back face breed probably got tarnished with it, although the, the data that's coming from Morden is that it's it's in all breeds, it's it's it's, it's irrelevant. But um, but what's going to happen now is the blackies will, if if you know folk embrace it as they have done and, and really push forward with it, is the blackies will end up ahead again because they're the ones really tackling it. I think it's I think the it's ones probably, well, on it a bit. I I don't I, yeah I don't I don't really like to sort of generalise into like the, the like breed specifics. You know everyone should, and I always think. As an, as an industry collectively, no matter what breed we are, or creed colour you are, uh, come back this head on and deal with yeah. it. Don't bury your head in the sand and yeah, worry true. about selling tops and all this nonsense because it's that's, it's irrelevant in the scheme of things. And you know, and uh, you know, we felt a, a duty to sort of to, to 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 hit the nail on the head with it, and, and which we have done. You know, we, we we've negated our percentage of it. It was our, our total flock mortality was up about eight percent when we started, so we had to do. Something, but we didn't really know what it was. But you know, three percent of that's probably you know other things. Would have happened we, anyway. we reckon mm -hmm. probably four or five of that was was OPA. But so we were we were pulling out ewes. But the, the really interesting thing was we were pulling out ewes. You know, your classic clinical case that was sort of leaned and kind of was maybe some coming out of his nose that any idiot could diagnose. But it was those big fat ewes that you had no idea. Yeah. But to us, you know, you were they were the best ones to be getting out because. They're the future spreaders of it. We don't really know how how it sort of moves. It, 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 what, what's been quite interesting as well with the, with us actually breeding blackface tops, we've have we do actually sort of follow the sort of I've, I've genetically all, all the user ear, earmarks. So we can follow family lines quite well, and there is there definitely is a genetic susceptibility um, or, or more so to it. Uh, um, uh, so, so, so we've found that, and that's been the ones that we've been calling harder. And, and it, it's nice getting them out of that earlier point when they're worth a bit of money. And, it saves us, you know, on this side of the country. This is something that really annoys me. Is in the West you get a dead bill for a dead ewe of eight to ten quid. We're, we're about twenty over this side, so you've, you've saved that. And, and right, in fairness, the, I'm seventeen pound. I, I we're we're seventeen. I think the guys down the southwest get a, a better deal with oh, that storage. I annoyingly. Right. Okay. I, I know it's interesting. Most foragers don't supply sheep and cattle with enough cobalt, copper, iodine, and selenium, critical to digestion, immunity, reproduction, and growth. When it comes to supplementation, there's a danger of under or oversupply. But when bolusing with Animax Traceshow, you can be sure every animal has enough for up to six months in one single application. Animax, giving what it takes. One of our laving fields I was going around and, and it was one of the beautiful days at the start of laving and there was a, there was a corner as all rash. I said, for Christ's sake, James, you've got to get these tied up and limed and drained. And, and then the next day it was one of those horizontal rain things and lambs yeah. in the back. Oh, Christ, I'll just keep their ashes out well, there. I, yeah. I tell you, it was a, a and I, I spoke to somebody else recently actually who said the same because they got rid of their rashes last year and, and regretted it. Mm. But I had a I had two main bits I was lambing this year. One was all fresh reseeds, immaculate, beautiful grass, similar to what we're sitting on here, but open and exposed. Other was old pasture, mm -hmm. very nice free draining, loads of rashes, far better like. Uh -huh. A dream to no a dream to lamb on, but the difference uh -huh. you, you had to lift every lamb in the open field because uh -huh. they'd nowhere to hide Aye. in the rashes. So it did open my eyes to uh -huh. uh, maybe keeping the odd uh, rashy field uh, for uh, lamb is not the worst uh, thing. Uh, they all have their use, and we, we, you know, we, as you see on the on the day here, you know, we have a lot of gorse as well. It's a it's a it's a hellish thing most of the year, but it, it's safe. The lot of lives it's safe for us. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, we just kept using to patches of gorse at times and just. Uh, Leave them to it. Really, you do more harm than good. I think. Aye, aye, more gun than I think, I, it. I think I'm actually my own worst enemy when it comes to that. Uh, Ninety percent of the problems I think I create myself. Aye, I? aye, 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 aye. Yeah. I'm certainly bad for that with Chibi. It's approach one to see what's going on, then she just disappears, and the lamb's just left there, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, it was fine. Why did I think it wasn't fine? <laughs> Uh, and just to touch on the horn thing, because we, we yep. say things in the podcast a lot, and then we get loads of comments yeah. and questions yeah. about what do you mean by it? And, and by that, you'll just mean the horns were getting quite tight and coming around to the face. So, yeah, so it probably turned. Uh, I mean, I suppose the black, the black face breed, 
mean, it's it, it, it's it's a very hard breed to do sort of performance recording and things on because it's a very sort of extensive breed in the sort of hills and uplands of the country and and people sort of do breed things on look mostly so so we sort of went down a route where this to get this tough look and it just so happened that if you got that sort of heavier tougher horn and they did look quite hard because you can see how folk went down that route but it maybe did a wee bit of, a wee bit of damage but it's it's a as I say all, all the problems that, that we have they're all genetics you can breed your way back out which which, which the guys are doing a, a, I'd say a, a great job of, 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 of doing already yeah I think there's a massive difference yeah. in that even like when we were crutching lambs in the market like you would there's a wee spell there where you get a lot of weather lambs and you know horns come uh -huh. but I definitely think they've, they've gotten top of that now and uh -huh. they've, they've it'll, seen it'll take a generation or two in the sheep to to, 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 to fully get, get rid of but, but the, at least it's, it's, it's going the right the right way but it's, uh, it's I suppose it's the it's the it's the age old problem. Uh, any it doesn't matter what breed it is. If you give it to a Scotsman or a pedigree breeder, we we wreck it. <laughs> some might say some, the commercial boys would say that anyway. And uh, just failing the cattle as well, because uh, I want to know for my own, not so much for folk watching. But you said nine hundred sucklers, right? How many heed of cattle have you actually got? Uh, I, that, well, that'll be that'll be there'll be, be, be no, but, uh, like across the, well, all the followers. Oh, I that'll be oh god, well there'll be that the calves and then there'll be the 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 the, the crop of calves in the following year. We finish them all. Uh -huh. So that I that'll be I what's that? Just about two thousand kind of head of cattle probably. Oh, in, uh, just over I. Uh, and you so, get somebody like full time on the passports and like. I know. Emma, Emma, my wife, uh, does Aye. that. Drives her absolutely insane, and I get abuse left, right, and centre for not uh, sending her things on time. But hey, well, I get that, and I've no been goat cattle, so don't worry about it. It's part of the fun. We deserve it. We absolutely deserve it. Um, no, that's good. Is yeah, that's been great. Anything else you want to cover? No, I'm happy. Anything else you want to get across? Uh, no, James, no. Or? I just, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's been a pleasure to, to, to do Scotch. It's a pleasure for you guys to, to, to come and do the podcast with you, and just I hope everyone. Uh, uh, comes and just has a has a great day out and just get over all that crap we've just been through in the spring and yeah no and listen and I, and I cannot promote it enough uh -huh. like yeah. the Scott Sheep is just for me it's just the best uh, one day show of the year I, I mean I'd, I'd actually choose over the Highland show if I was being perfectly honest like uh -huh. I, I, just, I just think it's bloody brilliant I'm obviously a sheep man uh -huh. but you know there's uh -huh. a lot of and MD coming to Scott Sheep probably is a sheep person as well and it's worth travelling if you're down south as well it, it, it's worth yeah. travelling up to so put all the details of where it is when it is in the link below, we've left it last minute. It's Wednesday, in fact, this will be out just before it. Ah, uh -huh. aye, so get your skates on. <laughs> yes, I get organised and get up. So, James, thanks very much for your time. Thanks, guys. We'll yeah. let you get back to it with Pleasure. the painting. Aye, back to I know. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, guys. Job done. Scott Sheep promoted. Yes, tick. It's going to be, I know I said that in the podcast, but mm. for me, it's the best one day event there is. I'm excited. Like, I love it. You said the last one you can remember being at was Dumfries House. And now I'm like, I can't even was I that even that at that? Do you know, or was that just people talking about it? Was it even Scott Sheep? Was it even Scott Sheep? I think there was one at Dumfries House, actually. Yeah. But that's before. I, I can't even remember yeah. that. No, I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I think my first one I actually remember might be Glen Rath. No, no, it must have been ones before that. But yeah, it's one of those things you just, you know, Glen Rath, King's Arms... Uh, where else had it recently? Over from Larg that we spoke about. Mm -hmm. um, where else has been the last couple of years? Jings, try to remember them. But am I right if it is every four years? No. Two years. Two years, right. Yeah, so it's every two years. That's one thing we didn't say in the podcast, though. Yeah. It's, that's another reason why it's so special, is it's every two years. So they have Scott sheep one year, then the next year they have North sheep. Okay. Which is sometimes in Scotland as mm -hmm. well, I think. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. I think it's up north, north next year. Okay. Um, it was in Northumberland last year. Right. But yeah, they do that. And then they do like, there's loads of them, like Southwest sheep and Welsh um, Welsh sheep, which is almost as big as Scott sheep. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a massive event as well. They might say it's bigger. Oh. Unlikely. Unlikely. Come on. No. Everything in Wales is a wee bit smaller. Oh. No, that's fine. Though. Is that a smaller country? It's a smaller country. Is the it? sheep are smaller, I was meaning. Oh, are they? Yeah. And the she shearers, shearers are a wee bit smaller too, oh. but they're, be oh. they're better. Are better, I'll give them that. Oh, we never spoke about Les Mahego. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I suppose now we've missed our chance. Yeah, we've missed our chance. How was Les Mahego? Yeah, so Les Mahego just happened at the weekend there, folks. I showed in the open, I was 13 out of 24 or 5. Pretty average. Mm -hmm. I had a pretty average pen, but I was pretty average anyway. But okay. uh, listen, I worked hard my whole life to be average, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, accomplished. What, what more can we hope for? Hope to see it, Scott Sheep. It can go farm. All the details have been on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, and you'll find them in the description of this video. But listen, chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you already know about it because it's the event of the summer. We'll see you there. See you there.